Emilio says, if I paint with single stage synthetic enamel, do I have to tack between coats? No, you never tack between single stage. Why? Because thing, single stage is tacky in between coats. It's, it's the literal paint. You're only going to be tacking before you paint. So right before you paint, you tack the whole vehicle down and then you lay your two coats of uh, acrylic or synthetic single stage enamel. Okay. You can go two or three heavy coats, but if you're shooting single stage thick, uh, you only need two medium wet coats. And that's what we did on the Good Van Project. And that's the video that you guys are going to be seeing tonight or tomorrow. I might just release it during the day tomorrow. I'm putting the final finishing touches on the video literally like today after this call right now. So, um, so yeah. VIP, I'm planning on painting with flames. Am I okay putting tape on the base coat or should I use inner coat? You could do either or. Um, an inner coat is basically a clear base coat. So you could either or, okay? You're okay masking directly over uh, flashed and dried base coat, okay? As long as you're clearing it within 24 hours, you're good. You're good to go. So if you put lay down your base, okay, you could basically just get your fine line tape. I would wait 45 minutes to an hour. Just let your base dry really well uh, and then start masking it up. Use your fine line tape. I like to use one eighth uh, thickness, one eighth to quarter inch. Okay, guys, this is fine line tape for... Uh, doing graphics and whatnot. Okay, this is the one eighth here. Good for flames. And this is the quarter inch, a little bit thicker. You guys can see the difference there. Okay, fine line tape gives you a nice fine line, gives you a nice edge. Okay, if you use regular masking tape, you're not going to do well. So you use this stuff and then you mask it up. I show you step by step how to do all of that. Uh, in VIP as well. You guys might want to consider checking out VIP and becoming a member. It's only $47 a year right now, which is dirt cheap. It basically just helps me pay for hosting and my, my support team uh, that takes care of everybody there and uh, all that. But there's over, you know, there's hundreds of hours of step-by-step -step videos on everything auto body. So you really might want to check it out. Hey, Tony, can I paint or prime over Chrome? Yes, absolutely. You can. Um, what I like to do is you could sand your chrome down if you if you if you have pitted chrome and you want to resurface it, I would use an 80 grit, sand it all down, put a 2K filler primer on top of it, or you can go epoxy, then 2K filler primer. Really doesn't matter. You're gonna get the same results and it will stick. <clears throat> then um, block it down 400 and shoot your base coat clear coat. Other way to do it if your chrome is in good condition, you could use a 150 grit, get it all sanded. Throw two coats of 2K filler primer on it, sand it down flat, wash it down flat. You could dry sand it or wet sand it and then shoot your base coat clear coat right on top of that. <clears throat> Gunmetal gray. Is it easier to spray than a silver metallic? It's pretty much the same thing. <clears throat> I would just say if you're shooting any type of silvers or metallics, just make sure you, you got a, a good gun um, that's evenly distributing paint. Okay, so make sure your gun is clean. Number one failure for people having screwing up their guns or messing up their guns is not properly cleaning and taking care of your guns. Okay, so after you paint, make sure you clean, you take your gun apart, not every nut and bolt because you don't have to take it completely apart, mainly your fluid tip, your needle, that whole area there, clean it really well um, and put it back together. Okay, that's the main thing. As long as you keep your guns clean, they should spray. Because when, when spraying any type of metallics or flakes, <clears throat> if you have a, a dirty gun or a malfunctioning gun that's not properly atomizing, you're going to get heavy spray at the top or bottom or in the middle. You, you know, the key is to have an even distribution of paint material hitting the panel uh, when you're painting. Okay, that's going to give you tiger stripes, um, you know, incorrect 
uh, fan pattern overlay will give you an issue as well. So I would say, you know, if you're spraying in kind of metallics, make sure your guns are clean. Make sure you're using a good atomization gun. This is the reason why I like using atom spray guns. They, they atomize really, really well and they spray fantastic. They're a good medium grade gun. They don't cost a fortune and uh, you get a good result, a, a really good result. <clears throat> so um, other than that, I would say make sure you're spraying at 20, you know, 26, 27 pounds trigger pulled. Okay, you can read your digital gauge. Here's a better example here. Uh, you can read your digital gauge, you know, trigger pulled, air coming in, push the button, make sure it's reading 26, 27 pounds uh, of air coming out. And then just go at it. Hopefully that helps. Can't get the name wrong. I believe it's mixing clear and inner coat, mid coat clear. Um, I mean, there's many ways to to you know lay paints. So I'm not sure what you're talking about, but um, yeah, inner coat inner coat clear could be clear carrying metal flake. And then you could put more plain clear coat on top of it. The other thing you could do is use a, a inner coat base coat. I've never heard of mixing inner coat base with clear. I've never heard of that one. But um, you can have an inner coat clear base coat, which carries your flakes or pearl for you, right? Um, I like to skip that most of the times. I'll just mix flake or pearl right into my clear coat, and I'll use clear as my... Uh, my inner coat. I do that with candy as well. And I show you how to do that in VIP. Uh, we basically use clear coat as a carrier to lay candy because when you, when you spray candy, the candy companies, the candy paint kits, they want to sell you their, their carrier, their candy carrier, which is the same thing as clear coat. So there's just many ways to do it guys. And I break down my method, how I successfully shoot candies and flakes and pearls in Learn Auto Body VIP, but you can also get the free training at learnautobodyandpaint.com, guys. Just click down below, <clears throat> register, get the free training right here. I'm dropping the link here or check around here. If you're, if you're a newbie or uh, you know advanced, you want to learn some, some cool tricks and tips, check it out. We've been helping people for over 10 years um, online. And uh, a lot of our VIP guys make money with it. They open up their own body shops and what. Single stage be thinned out to use with airbrush. Yes, absolutely. Just add some reducer to it. Um, so I would mix your single stage with your catalyst, with your hardener, whatever the mixing ratio is. Sometimes it's eight to one. Sometimes it's one to four. Uh, whatever you're mixing, whatever paint brand you're using, mix up your single stage. Then after that, after your hardener and catalyst is mixed into it, then you can add 10, 15% reducer to thin it out so you can spray it out of an airbrush or a smaller tip size. Uh, does VIP cover painting graphics on a car? For example, taking a superhero drawing and transfer it to a car or truck. Uh, we cover pinstriping and multi-tone graphics and flames. We don't cover artwork uh, because obviously I'm not an artist. I don't do any airbrushing or any of that. But we can show you how to prep everything. So if you guys get an airbrusher, come to your house or your shop or they could do their job, then you basically clear right on top of it. Okay. Um, but we don't show you how to actually do artwork like drawing a superhero. You know what I mean? Hey, Tony, what type of paint do you recommend having to paint underneath the car? I mean, differential transmission. Uh, you could use any single stage. I like single stage when painting um, motors uh, you know, differentials and things like that. I would just use a solid, um, single stage product. Like this is a good product here. Where did it go? AIC is a good performance product. Okay. They make a good hard single stage enamel, but any single stage, or you can use undercoating. This is a good undercoating tight seal. I like to use this underneath, um, classic cars and whatnot, you know, hit everything black with a rubberized undercoating, this is good stuff. Mixing pearl, is mixing a pearl with clear, then shooting just clear a good idea? Or should I shoot the regular three-stage pearl? 
Um, well, if you're doing like a, a OEM job and you're painting like, uh, you know, you're trying to get to OEM and then they basically sell you the base, the inner, the, the pearl, and then the clear, right? I would just do it their way. Okay. Because you're going to have your own pearl inner coat, which you're going to mix one-to-one -one with your reducer. Okay. And, and spray that over your base coat. So you're going to spray your, your white base, whatever it is. You're going to spray your white pearl, whatever it is. And then you're going to put your clear coat on top. So, but if you're doing a custom job, you know, where you're not trying to color match or do an OEM type of thing, then absolutely. I always mix pearls or flake in my clear coat. You know, you could mix pearl in your clear coat and just lay two coats of pearl just like that and not even have a, a, a clear coat over it because the pearl is so fine. It literally just mixes in and buries itself in the clear coat. So I've done many custom paint jobs where, you know, you just paint the custom bike. Say you did like a white base and then you just put some blue pearl in the clear coat, put two coats of clear, you're done. The only issue is if you have any runs. So you have to make sure when you paint, you're not, you, you know, you don't paint with runs. You got to make sure that you can lay down paint, lay it on thick and glossy without running or sagging. And that was kind of like one of my, one of my things, like I was able to, to really paint. I still can, I still can paint really well without having any runs or sags. Um, I guess I just have good, you know, paint flow and distance just been painting for a long time, you know? <clears throat> so hopefully that helps over a base coat and it did not turn out glossy. It looked flat. Where did I go wrong? I'm not sure, Steven, there's many reasons. It could just be bad clear coat, uh, a bad batch of clear coat. Uh, wrong mixture, um, cheap clear coat, you know, a cheaper clear coat will, will die back. It's called dieback where it just dries dull because it's just a cheap, crappy clear. Um, but color sanding and buffing could fix that. You know, I don't know. I don't have any pictures or video of what you're doing, but if you guys want to send in some pictures or videos and ask me some detailed questions, I don't mind replying back with a video. So you can just send all your detailed questions and videos to Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. Tony at learnautobodyandpaint.com. And um, the more detailed question you can give me, like here's what I did, this is what I did, this is the paint that I use, this is a mixture I did. The more you can give me, the more I can help you. Because if you just be, you know, very, you know, bland and general about your question and without giving me details, it's hard for me to know where you're coming from and, and kind of what happened to get you into that predicament so I can help you. You know what I mean? So if you guys are going to send me images and video of your issue, send it in with a detailed, how you got there, what products you're using, what sandpapers you used, what primers you used, like to, so I can be like, okay, oh, this is, this was probably the issue or, you know what I mean? I can help you out better. <laughs> a rust hole. <laughs> well, uh, Mayan three, four, nine, five, six. I would highly recommend you to watch the good van series. You can actually get that at here. I believe you can just grab the, the complete training there. Good van. Was it the good van or just good van? I think it was just good van. Let me know if that link works guys. Um, so if it's a rust hole, you could just grind it down, um, treat it with vinegar water to kill the rust, sand it again with a little bit of 80 grit, and then you can lay some uh, short strand kitty hair on it, some fiberglass, and then finish it off, prime it, body filler a little bit more if you need to, block it out, flatten it out, shape it, prime it, 2K filler primer, block it, and you're ready for paint. Finally started uh, body work on my quick flip using the U-Paul High Build 2K. First time using paint gun. I shot this morning and it was spitting toward the end. Left a few small chunks. What do you think? It's probably because your primer was maybe too too thick. So if you're if you if your material is too thick, it's going to start spitting out of your gun and coming out dry. Unless another reason is maybe after you mixed it, you didn't strain it into your cup. Um, I would take your neck filter out of the gun and just, just strain your, uh, your primer before putting it into your gun. Get rid of your filter. This way you have better flow out. 
Um, so I would double check those steps, but it's not, you know, necessary to have super smooth primer. Like you could screw up during the primer stage because, you know, even if you're blowing out dry primer or spits or chunks of primer for some reason, you know, your paint gun is clogged up or your material's too thick. <clears throat> um, you're okay because you're going to be blocking all of that down and out anyway. Okay. You just got to make sure um, your primer is clean. So that's probably the reason, Ketis, I would even reduce your, pr your primer a little bit, maybe 5%, 10%. Just get a little bit more liquid in there. Thin it out a little bit. Make sure your gun is clean. Strain it before you put it in your cup. <clears throat> make sure your neck filter is out of the gun right here. Just make sure this is out. You got no little baby filter in there. Um, and then go ahead and try it again. Okay. Because, you know, sometimes primers get cakey out of the box. So if you, if you have a new can of primer and, um, you haven't, it's been sitting for a while, you go ahead, you mix it. Sometimes the chunks don't break down as you're reducing it and mixing up your primer, which is going to give you some chunks coming out. Um, you know, it's not a, it's not a deal breaker. You just, you let it dry and you block it out with 400 and then you're ready for paint. Tony, can you recommend a good quality pearl? That's not too expensive. I like house of color, but they're very expensive. Uh, but Zula has their own pearl brand <clears throat> called, um, X finishes. And you can just shop here, check these colors out. They, they have a, like about 10 to 15 different colors. I would check them out. Um, I have, I have a lot of X finishes pearls that I've sprayed with. This is what it looks like here. So this is, um, deep sun gold pearl. Um, they even got rainbow flake, silver flake. This is moon dust white pearl, uh, by X finishes really good quality pearl. And I think it's like 20 bucks. Sometimes you can get a deal, buy one, get one free or whatever. Thanks for tuning in. I will see you next week, same time. Peace out. Have a good rest of the week. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in, guys. Have a good one. Cheers.